David Gentry, son of Dr. Robert Gentry and associate in his father's work on creation. We can demonstrate the principle of polonium radio halos. Imagine this Alka-Seltzer tablet is a bit of polonium and this glass of water is a piece of molten granite. I drop the tablet in and it begins to fizz. Think of these bubbles as the radiation emitted by that bit of polonium embedded in the granite. This fizz will go away in about 30 seconds and we'll have nothing left but a slightly tangy glass of water. Now, is there any way we could preserve these bubbles as they are? We could try placing the glass in the freezer. The water, of course, would solidify after a while. That's something similar to what evolutionary theory suggests, that molten rock slowly cools to form granite. But as you've already guessed, freezing this glass of Alka-Seltzer wouldn't do any good. The bubbles will have gone long before the water turns to ice. And that's exactly what would have happened to polonium radiation if the granite had slowly cooled. It would have disappeared long before any radio halos could have been imprinted in the solid rock. If I show you a frozen glass of water with all the fizz of a tablet still intact, like this, you will know that something happened to instantly freeze the water. In this case, we merely froze it instantly in time by a pause of the videotape. Likewise, if we look at a radio halo demonstrated unmistakably to have been produced by a certain kind of polonium, we can know that the granite around it had to be formed instantly. The implications are incredible. If Dr. Robert Gentry is correct, all the evolutionary assumptions about the Earth forming over millions or billions of years are wrong. And the account in Genesis of the creation of the Earth is substantiated. But is Dr. Gentry right? Is he just some maverick scientist conducting his work in virtual isolation? If his experimental results were brought to the light, would other scientists be able to quickly discredit them? As a matter of fact, Dr. Gentry conducted most of his research on radio halos at the Oak Ridge National Laboratories in Tennessee. His findings have been published in many of the world's leading scientific journals. Science. Nature. Geophysical Research Letters. Earth and Planetary Science Letters. Physical Review Letters. Annual Reviews of Nuclear Science. Papers appearing in these journals are subject to peer review. That is, other scientists in the same field carefully examine the evidence presented and the experimentation used to see if there are any flaws in the data. So far, it seems no one has been able to contradict Dr. Gentry's findings. No one has been able to find a hole in his case. In December of 1981, Dr. Robert Gentry was called to testify at an Arkansas trial in which the American Civil Liberties Union attempted to prevent the teaching of creation science in that state's public schools. He presented his findings regarding polonium radio halos as evidence of an instantaneous creation of the granites. The ACLU brought one of the world's foremost geologists, Dr. Brent Dalrymple, to testify for evolution. But on the witness stand, no scientific evidence was offered to challenge this discovery for creation. Instead, it was referred to as, quote, just a tiny mystery that we can't quite explain.